Director is uh, Sven Inge Ödegård. He is the Business Development Manager of eDrilling Solutions. And uh, he's going to talk about using drilling simulators for entire team training and to support real-time operations. Uh, Sven Inge is the Project Manager for the Intellectus Training Simulator. And he has been working uh, with drilling control and information systems for the last 15 years. Sven Inge has a master's degree in cybernetics from the University of Stavanger and he is a fan of the Green Soccer Club I know and yes. he is also quite interested in uh, sports shooting. So, what about for Sven Inge? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit about uh, uh, how we use uh, drilling simulators. Uh, in the industry today and a bit about how uh, we foresee that this will be used even more in the future. So, uh, uh, I had a look at the program yesterday and it said uh, that I'm going to talk about life-size drilling simulators. Life-size. And I, I, I didn't really understand what life-size was. <laughs> So, but um, I thought that uh, if we change it, uh, or, or, or more of the topics of what I'm going to speak about is uh, life cycle uh, building simulators. Because everything is related to what we do in operation, and the operational goal we have, and the result uh, on that. But uh, in order to achieve that, uh, you, take, you have to take into account both training and, and the planning phase. So I'm going to talk about how we can use uh, drilling simulators in uh, a bigger contents related to this. Uh, what I'm going to start with is, is, is a film uh, that was made in, uh, in 2009 uh, that was uh, we tried to foresee how drilling simulators could be used in a, a real-time environment um, in 2020 or something like that. Uh, uh, just one small thing is that this was uh, before the iPad came to the market. as we are forced to pull off bottom and clean the hole. Well, it suggests that we should limit the hour piece rate from the start of the section, uh, and this way the problem will never occur. And it also suggests that we should uh, optimize the drilling fluid. Good. We'll import the ROP limits into the automatic drilling module and give the mud engineer a call about the drilling fluid. Uh, I'll set up the simulation again with these changes implemented so we can see if something else will occur. No problems detected. Drilling can start. Information ablation logs are detecting higher reservoir pressure than prognosed. Mud weight is insufficient to control well. Mud weight will be increased before drilling into the reservoir. 
Starting to mix drilling fluid, displacement will start in 10 minutes. I'll just run through the simulations uh, with no changes to see uh, what the software says. Good idea. Yes, it does look like we'll take a kick. I'll run through it again with the changed mud weight just to see. Mm -hmm. Well, no problems this time. Very well. I'll just let the software continue with the displacement then. Good. Reservoir model has been recalculated. Current well path is not optimal for reservoir drainage. Alternative well path suggested. Hi. Hello. Hi, good to see you. It seems like we're going to have higher pressure in the reservoir than anticipated. The reservoir model was updated with this information. And it seems like one of the areas we were hoping to, uh, to drain had no communication with the rest of the reservoir. I would like to change the well path so that it penetrates both reservoirs. Could you check if this well path is okay? Sure, I'll check it out. The suggestion from the software will be fine. If we make a turn already at this point, we'll be able to penetrate both reservoirs. The drainage section of the main reservoir will be shorter though. Oh, that's okay. The well should be able to provide good drainage of the main reservoir anyway. And the value of reaching both of these reservoirs should be great. Okay, see you later. Take care. Goodbye. Well, I think I'll stop the film there. Uh, it's just summing up that, uh, <coughs> that um, the manager was very pleased that they did reach two reservoirs and got a much higher production out of things. So, uh, this is uh, uh, just a vision and, and, and a belief that how things will work in the future related to use of drilling simulators. So, a bit about that one. What's, uh, uh, what is this drilling simulator about? What is a drilling simulator? Uh, a drilling simulator is, is uh, a suite of, uh, of mathematical models uh, running in, uh, in an environment. It could be a real-time environment, it could be a planning environment, it could be a training environment. Uh, the set of model can then uh, be used to, to uh, kind of visualize or to model the different sub-processes in, uh, in drilling. And uh, this is the background for all, all the technology that I'm going to present today. The use of an, uh, of an integrated drilling simulator to support and to training and to planning uh, during operation. So, what do you do today in planning? Uh, sure, you do a lot of uh, pre drill simulations in, in, in planning in all aspects. But are these data used during operation or during training? I don't think they are used to the full potential. Uh, this is one of the, the breakers for, for our company to, to start to work further on, on the simulator again, uh, on the drilling simulators. Because we had a lot of experience from running real time systems for drilling simulators, but uh, Startup gave us the, the opportunity to work with this related to training as well. To use the same simulator for, for, for real time, uh, for training, that we use it for, for, for real time. So, then you can uh, perform well specific integrated team training. That's a, that's a quite uh, uh, challenging title, but all the different sub processes in, in drilling can be, can be uh, trained through a simulator like that. Uh, you have to, of course, enter all the correct data, all your well <coughs> geometry, all your BSJ, all your fluid program, everything. Uh, and again, this can actually come from a real time operation. 
so that you can go into training uh, from operation when you see a problem occur. So this is a, a, is a loop that uh, I think will be closed even more in the future. Today, you do well specific training uh, on, with your rig equipment and, and your well, but I think this will be integrated towards what you have in operation as well. So this is uh, uh, some of the values for team training. You, you're all aware of this, uh, I, I, I suppose. I'm, I'm not going to talk about that, but it's very important that you, you use the whole team for this, because then you have a much better understanding of the challenges. You can train in a safe environment, and you can take out the, out the benefits of, of the training and, and how people communicate and how uh, this re uh, reacts with the operation. Uh, it, a bit back to the model. If you're going to have a, a, a simulator like this, it's very important that you have dynamic module because drilling is a dynamic process. So you're really depending on high sophisticated modeling in order to achieve this, both on, uh, on flow related stuff and on, on torque and drag stuff uh, in this. Uh, a bit back to, to um, to, uh, to real-time operation, how you use simulators in a real-time environment. Uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, I can explain that, that you, you run a simulator in parallel with the operation, and that creates uh, an idealistic picture of what you're doing in drilling. And then you compare it with uh, real-time measurements, and then you can see if there's any deviation. If you have a deviation, then you can give a diagnostic. Uh, so then you can give diagnostic if you're cutting loading, if you go, uh, if you are proceeding to a stuck situation, if you have a kick well control, and in addition you can also uh, foresee what will happen forward in time, in real time. That's another, another important element. Uh, I have a small film here from um, uh, from an, uh, an operation uh, where. Where, where this is, uh, is running. Uh, here you can see that um, from the simulator you get uh, uh, a message about poor hole cleaning coming out from the simulation. You can see here is uh, just a visualization of the, the cutting loading in the well. This is a visualization of the temperature profile in the well. All this is updated in, in real time during operation. Uh, you have uh, just a small uh, 2D visualization of, of how the well is set up. And now you can see that the simulator gives a warning about forward looking. This is uh, another instance of the simulator running either 20 meters ahead in time or 30 minutes ahead in time, giving you the message that will happen in the future. So then you get the message and, uh, and an explanation about why did this occur. So this is an example of use in, of a simulator in real time. And this is what was also verified by, by the customer. This was actually happening and they really got that kick uh, in, in five minutes or something after this message came up. So, if, if, we, if we then uh, think about a life cycle simulation, uh, yeah, to be more practical, how, how will this actually work uh, for, for, uh, for drilling a section or cementing a line or, or whatever operation? This means that, uh, that during planning you use models uh, to create a, a pre-drill model that you, uh, that you design your well around. And then you take this pre-drill model, the results from this, into training. You train in the simulator and get experience and then you might update the plan related to that. And then you go into operation. And when you're in, in operation, uh, it will never be as expected. That's the only thing you know. So uh, then you have logs coming in from uh, downhole tools, or, and you have uh, real time readings on rig and so on. And these are fed back to the simulator, to the, to the planning pre drill model, and updated the, in the pre drill model in order to give you the new direction. So this is how I see a, a life cycle during drilling. And of course, uh, when you finish with drilling, you're going into well intervention, you, you're going to completion and, and so on. But so all of that can also be used in the, in the same uh, thinking. But uh, 
as we see it uh, for pure drilling, this is, is how we foresee this uh, uh, to, to be done. Uh, this is just some, uh, some small examples of, uh, for, for drilling and, for, and, and how this could be, be done, the monitoring things and, and um, integrated with, with collapse and pore pressure measurements and so on. And the same uh, can be done for, for, for running a, a liner and, and cementing a liner. That you use pre drill simulators, you use training, and you use uh, real time simulators. So, uh, this might see, uh, uh, look uh, very complicated, but it, it's really not. It's just how to do it. Uh, a timeline for doing such things like that is, 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 is just a couple of months. And a couple of months is what it takes uh, for a planning of a well anyway. So we think that this is, this is not something way in the future. This is something we can actually do now, and, and this is something that we can do with a, with a customer today, uh, with the, uh, the status of, of how the modeling uh, are now. And this gives a lot of added value. Uh, all of you know about NPT and, uh, and, uh, and, and the problems that we have. And we think uh, by doing training and, and real-time updates during operation, all of these different elements here can be uh, attacked to reduce your non productive time in drilling. And also, of course, uh, make uh, drilling optimization. That's the, the, the second thing you get out of, of doing things in, in this way. So, in addition, drilling optimization, HSE improvement and increased uh, recovery and of course uh, a lot of risk reduction uh, you will get by, by doing this in, in this way. Okay, I think that was uh, I think that was uh, uh, to, to present and uh, maybe some have some questions. Yeah. Well, what's the ha hardest thing about this? What's the hardest thing? Is, is, to, is to change the, the, the way that uh, things are run today and to do it in, a, in another manner. That's the hardest thing. And, uh, and when you come into to operation, uh, the challenge there is about data quality and, and the quality of data uh, you receive uh, and to be able to filter those. So there's, a, there's a big uh, restriction of how, of how to do this. And, I have another question, maybe yeah. on the humorous side. Have you sued Apple for stealing your design? <laughs> <laughs> maybe I should, no. <laughs> oh, actually, we had uh, two, um, uh, uh, when we made this film, we challenged two uh, media students. To, to, uh, we, ma we made uh, the, the roadmap for them, and we challenged them, you make this film, as you will foresee this. So, uh, so they were very good. Uh, and uh, it was a very... Uh, very good uh, eye opener for us as well when we work with it. Hmm. I have a question yeah. about uh, the models that you're creating. How much of it is based on previous data, and how much of it is predictive? Okay, finish with uh, How much is based on previous previous data for yeah. the models, yeah. and how much hmm. of it is predictive? Hmm. Yeah. Uh, a lot of things is based on previous data. When you make a pre-built model of uh, of your uh, of your well to be able to, to, to set uh, the, the pore and frack and collapse pressure and all of that, then you take into account a lot of logging data. That's all what we gather and, and you, set, uh, you, you run it through uh, well, uh, well possibility models, pore pressure, model, pore pressure models and so on to be able to set the limit. Then you use a lot of background data in, in this phase. But when you come into operation, then it's data that's coming real time and also, uh, all, also uh, simulations for the time. Before it's so, so it's 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 on the pre-drill uh, model side that you take into account the historical data. Yes. I have one question down here. Yeah. Um, you said that uh, one of the challenges was data, and uh, that's a very general term. Uh, yeah. So you uh, divide that up in. Uh, Okay, um, you have two, two, two types of, of data. Uh, one is setup data and another is real-time data. Uh, setup data is, uh, is uh, related to well bore geometry, BHAs uh, and so on. Uh, the challenge there is that if the, somebody 
just prior to drilling, uh, decides that I want to change the BHA for some reason, and then uh, the system is not updated. Uh, th so that's a, a kind of a, a system uh, system uh, thing that uh, that it's yeah, could be could be dealt with. Uh, the other thing is is real time data, uh, the poor quality on on, on uh, weight on bit measurements. Uh, mud temperature, mud density, mud fluids, and so on. So uh, those are the main difference between them. Hmm. Hello, uh, I have a name, uh, NOV simulator instructor. Hmm. Uh, when you do instruction, like in mission here, how many people do you have in the, in the uh, room or in the facilities uh, involved in the training, instructor side and, and customer side, and how much time do you envision training would take to, uh, for a well-specific uh, training program? Mm. Uh, we, we have an example with, with, with Stapano. Um, uh, they're going to run an HPHT operation, and then we have one day of training for each team, but then we have kind of designed the, the, the training related to that. And then they have a, a, a loss circulation cake, uh, case, they have a, a kick case on and, and, and how to handle it and, uh, and detect this. Uh, they are about uh, from 8 to 12 people uh, involved in the training. That's a uh, driller, assistant driller, two pusher, company man, direct man, uh, drilling supervisor, mud engineer, mud logger. So uh, the whole team is involved and, and they are spread around in different rooms in uh, some part of the time and, and they are in one room some, uh, some part of the time to be able to, to, to see the communication and to, to, to have the to learn from the discussion that they have. And there's one or two instructors uh, uh, involved, uh, and also uh, an engineer from, from Stato that's uh, kind of uh, facilitating uh, the, the, the program. Hmm. Yeah, uh, so the dream here, or the goal, is uh, this sort of concept of drilling the well in a simulator prior to actually drilling it. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's the goal. <laughs> um, but um, uh, how how do you? I know know some oil companies have seen the light, so to speak, when it comes to uh, you know, use of simulators in this type of training. Uh, how do you see uh, some of the other companies involved? Because you know you need all the sort of involved uh, companies that are training. You, know, you have the, the drilling contractor. You may have one of the service companies. You know, like a company or a direct company. How do they see this uh, going forward? Do they see this is the right direction to go, or are they very supportive? Yeah, the the, the teams that we have had in, in training simulator so far uh, is is a. Uh, set up of, of both contractor and, 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 uh, and the company people. So there, there are mud loggers, there are people from uh, the drilling contractor, so all of them are working together and, and they see great benefits uh, of, of how to do this and how to be able to train on specific challenges before they actually drill the well and, and have some ways uh, of thinking about how that communication will be during the operation. Yeah. One question, or two, uh, probably a very challenging question. Do you think, with your visions, that this system will replace the existing human-based uh, uh, service support centers, like the one that Stato's got at Furos, this uh, subsea service support center, where they're trying to to, uh, to to gather all available information from all their fields? That's one. Another thing. Well, I, I must say I really like this film. It, it was a very great way of presenting uh, how we, we see we can model and, uh, and simulate uh, 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 troubles and, uh, in advance to, to avoid them. Uh, but, um, and, and for students, politicians, etc., this was very good. But they were facing one parameter and they were correcting, optimizing one parameter. In real life, we are talking about 20, 50 different parameters. And when you improve one, you, you will make another one worse. And then uh, all the drilling at the end of the day will come up with compromises. And you will need to offer a bit to achieve on the other side. But um, uh, you, will this uh, model uh, and simulation in itself give all the correct answers or will you still need 
to be consulted by the specialists and all the companies you were mentioning already? Or, or do you believe that the, the system uh, and the data uh, simulator itself will give all the, uh, give all the correct answers? Thanks. Yes, uh, I'll start with the last one because that's one I remember. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, in, in, in the far future, yes. This, that's why we have rolling simulators. That, that's why uh, we, we can't relate that everybody needs to take their opinion on things and, uh, and, uh, and start things like that. But this would be a stepwise uh, introduction. And, and one parameter is yes, but uh, uh, one very important parameter uh, that was uh, that you, you can interact with a reservoir uh, uh, people and not only drilling people, talking to themselves about things but you are updating the reservoir and you get feedback from, from a geologist or a reservoir engineer. That's very important. And the first question was... Uh, 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 will that replace uh, the service centers which uh, already are established? Yeah, not uh, not uh, replace them, but... Uh, uh, I think we have to kind of think different. Uh, the service center is an arena for collaboration between people. But uh, in the film here, you, you, you can collaborate on other arenas as well. And uh, I remember back in uh, 2008, I was uh, at a conference that Petel uh, uh, said, and there was somebody from Microsoft, and uh, he, he, uh, he said, I don't understand this. Why are you building all these centers? You have computers to, uh, to, uh, to talk to each other. You, you, you don't need these centers. That was his uh, opinion. But I think we'll have centers now, but in the future, maybe not. Um, I, I think it's really nice what I'm saying, but uh, I still think that there's people out there underrated all the things that are logistic and things like that. How, how do you think it will work out if you are simulating and then you just make a change? I mean, there are, you have to change a lot of things. Yes. You have to communicate with people that is outside going actually putting all the, the pieces together. Mm. And uh, I, I don't see how fast that can be, you know. <laughs> no, it, it, it's, it's a challenge and it's, um, and it's about uh, uh, maybe uh, real-time uh, change management, uh, if we can uh, use that as that impression. But I think uh, we, we see things are moving faster and faster and faster. Uh, and that's why I think uh, more and more the decision, more and more things related to this will be done in real time. But you have to have trusted systems, you have to have verified technology to be able to do this. And uh, I, today it's a, it's a lot of uh, organizational, uh, I don't know, fear related to, 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 to things like this. But this is how we foresee things will happen. And I think we will start at one point and uh, then we will gradually come to the, the final solution. <laughs> okay, so it doesn't appear to be more questions, so thanks a lot for spending it for a very interesting presentation. Mm -hmm.